What's up, friends? Today we're checking out Shakira Bizarrap Studio Session number 53. We'll be looking at this song from the perspective of a producer and songwriter going into what specific things make this song fit so well in the genre in which it is, and also the ways in which this song subverts our expectations. Because we're looking at it from that perspective, expect a lot of stops to go over specific key elements of the song. Okay, right from the get-go with the song, we get the chorus. That is not a normal thing in really, really popular songs. You don't normally start with the chorus. You normally have some buildup to get there. So right there, we're getting something different than we normally get. Also, we just have the synth, bass, vocal, no drums right now. So we get this kind of cool syncopated synth that's not necessarily coming in on the one every single time. And I think that's fascinating. <laughs> The beat here is a four on the floor house type beat. And that's been really popular in pop music recently. It hasn't been as big in the Latin music subgenre where we've seen a lot more reggaeton beats. And so this is kind of unexpected, even for Shakira. You know, Shakira is kind of a crossover type artist where she's done a lot of English and Spanish music but her recent stuff has been a lot more reggaeton based and a lot less kind of house beat based. So this is something that uh, Latin crowd would be a little less familiar with, which is good. Okay. Right here, we're getting a key line. Shakira is saying that she's not going to return to this old relationship. No vuelvo. So right there, we understand what type of song this is. This is a broken heart female empowerment song. So Shakira as a personality and as like the character of this song is pissed off. She's been disappointed many times before by this previous boyfriend and now she is committed to not returning. It's very similar to Dua Lipa's song, Don't Start Now, which is saying like, hey, this isn't gonna happen again because I am bigger, I am stronger, I'm a different person than I was when you broke my heart. Really powerful you know, type of song. It's a specific subgenre of song that's become really popular lately. Sorry, baby. Love that part. We get a quick little break in the beat and we get a break in her vocals. So we've had this flowing, smooth vocal going with that four on the floor house beat and then here, sorry, baby, hace rato. Slowing everything down, taking a step back, getting us kind of off kilter. We, we've been going with the flow and then the groove gets interrupted, but in a really cool way. Love that pre-chorus, you know, saying she's a wolf that's not for people like him. Again, cementing in that fempowerment, brokenhearted vibe, like I am now this thing that is better than what you could get. I think this course is really interesting because it blends two different styles. So at first we get this held out word, this and then we get this more rhythmic flowy portion that's less focused on that core melody. So we get kind of this back and forth, which just, you know, it tastes good. You know, it, it sounds right to us because we have that contrast inserted right there. Also, 
This song is in D minor, which is just an interesting place for it to be, but we're focused a lot on that A. So that's the fifth of the D minor, which kind of puts us in this unresolved position that we're focused so much on the fifth. And it kind of creates this slight discomfort that is a good echo of Shakira's discomfort that she feels for this situation. Ah, ah. One thing I really like about this producer, and it's shown right there, is that he's not getting in the way of Shakira's vocals at any point. The synths and all the work isn't competing with Shakira, it's always taking up a different space. And so having that little solo section right there is saying, hey, you know, like, we can have like this cool little instrumental part, but we're never gonna let it get in the way of what the primary vocalist is doing. Just a great pop decision right there. I love this portion right there. She starts with that splashing noise while talking about, you know, I hope it doesn't splash on you which is just genius, you know, I like when there's that combination of the foley of the musical sounds with the description of the sound. And then right after we get that explanation, we have a change up in rhythm. And we're going back to this more reggaeton sounding beat, something that a uh, Latin crowd would be really, really familiar with. So it's just a really good transition, a really good opportunity to switch over. We used a Foley to switch which beat we were using. Again, we're using Foley to transition to a new section. Also, that line is so good. Women don't cry, they get paid. And that is just such a clear representation of what she's accomplishing with this song. Instead of crying and getting overly emotional about this piece, she's using it to her, to her advantage. She's using it to make herself stronger and also to make a lot of money because now she's finding a good outlet for it. She's singing about it. Kind of like what emo music did, you know? It took something terrible and it made it into art, which I think is just one of the most beautiful things you can do is take something painful and turn it into art. I just love that concept so much. I love this pre-chorus because it's not the first pre-chorus we got. It's that stopping point that we noticed earlier. So instead of having that first pre-chorus about her being a wolf, she's now just relying on the melody from before and using new words saying, you know, I, this lady that you're with sounds like a good, a good person, you know, but she's probably more like the type of person that would be with you. There's this range that Shakira dwells in vocally that's just so cool. And it's in between the head voice and the chest voice. And what I like right here is that she goes from the chest voice to the head voice. This ooh is kind of in that more falsetto-y range, more in that head voice range. But then when she goes to that rhythmic part, she's back in that in-between zone, that kind of dwelling in between chest and head that is just such a golden spot for her. I love the line, I'm worth two 22-year-olds. Like, that's just so intelligent. It's such a great line, especially coming from someone like Shakira, who, although she is 45 at this point, she is this just powerhouse of a woman this like cultural icon that's still ridiculously attractive to the point where you're like yeah you know like if I look at like a 22 year old and I look at Shakira a lot of the times I would choose Shakira you know just she's a baller she's an absolute baller 
Cambiaste un Rolex por un Casio Vas acelerado, dale despacio Ah, mucho gimnasio What's interesting about these disses is now her ex like wore a Casio and went to a game in a Twingo, which is just to me a demonstration of how, what's the word for machismo in English? Demonstration of what a douchebag this guy is. I mean, it is kind of funny that he's going around like wearing a Casio now and like driving in a Twingo. Like, there's a little bit of humor to it, but most of it, you're just like, dude, you're just promoting her song. Like, it's just making this more famous. So it's it's weird. It's this whole dramatic thing. And I think that's one thing that makes this song so potent is that it's about real events. And there's drama that people can dig into. There's, like, words here that people can, like, go over and they can dig into the lyrics. And that makes songs so engaging. I think that's what made Driver's License this huge phenomenon is we were watching this broken romance unfold between people who are in a TV show. So you could have already gotten involved in their lives and then we see this impact in this art. This art is echoing a reality, which I think is so engaging. I love the third pre-chorus because it goes back to the first pre-chorus structure, but it draws the lyrics from the second pre-chorus. Because of the second pre-chorus, we think right after that line about, you know, tiene nombre de persona buena, we're gonna get the chorus, but we don't. We go back to the first pre-chorus. We get that, you know, she-wolf line that's just so powerful and so intense. <laughs> I love how much they're messing around with her vocal. They do these little like tuning things that are just for kind of the effect it has, just for the specific sound it has. I mean, Shakira is a great singer. She doesn't need tuning on her vocals, but that tuning on her vocals is creating this own separate sonic identity that just sounds so good within this context. So good, so good. Really clear example of what a femme empowerment song can be and what like a heartbreak song can be. It combines these different elements that are really popular with people right now and makes it so good. And because, you know, within Hispanic culture, there is this tendency, at least in the past, for uh, guys to be like really overbearing and to kind of control things when this woman can kind of come forward and be like, no, like I'm done with that bull crap. And I'm like speaking for myself. It's so much more powerful even than when like an American woman or like a uh, someone who's not in that Latin culture does it, you know, because they're not fighting against the same intensity of barriers. There's still definitely barriers, and that's why femme empowerment is such like a powerful subgenre of music. But here, it's just like it's a little bit more intense. There's there's another layer there that we don't see in American music, and I think that's one thing that makes this song so potent, so powerful, and such a hit with so many people. I hope you've enjoyed this little analysis, this little breakdown. If you have, I'd really appreciate if you liked, commented, shared, and subscribed. Also, if you like this music, you might really like the latest project that I've been doing with my good friend Harley Swisher. It's called Decay, the new EP, and it uses a lot of Latin rhythms within an alternative rock construct. So, you know, it's, it's just kind of this fascinating mix. We both are, you know, people who love Latin culture and love the identities in Latin culture. And it's reflected within the music that we've made. That's it. Catch you on the flip. Someone please hold my hand.